Hey guys, I'm back at Steve's Leaves, and last week we went over begonia care, but this week it just makes sense to go over begonia propagation, because once you learn how to take care of your begonia, now you can actually propagate it and make so many new plants. So Steve is gonna teach us how to do that in this week's episode of Plant One On Me, Field Trip Edition. So one of the things that I think that people fail to realize is that when they have plants, they could easily propagate them, and begonias in particular are pretty easy to propagate. There are uh, lots of different ways to propagate lots of different plants, and a lot of people have their own favorite ways. The way we do it here is, uh, for example, these for uh, rhizomatous and rex begonias, that we take uh, leaves and we uh, stick the leaves in the soil like that, and uh, that's how it starts. This is not just a leaf, you have a little bit of the, the stem or the petiole. A little bit itself. of the, yeah, the stem to the leaf is called a petiole and you leave a little bit of that on there, but not everyone does that either. Uh, there are other types of cuttings I'll demonstrate, uh, cone cuttings and things like that too. But anyway, so you start with the leaves and with, uh, if you're successful, you'll eventually have some little plantlets coming up there. A lot of times you can just use a wedge or a single leaf. We like to use two small leaves, but um, but you see there's the mother leaf still there and the children are getting bigger. So you can see there's still on this one a little bit of the, uh, the mother leaf left, but, uh, but it won't be long before that will, uh, will be gone. And now this is ready for sale, is this correct? Uh, that's correct? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the size. So it, it takes a number of months to get to, to the point uh, where we would have one from, from here to how here. Many, how long does it take to get from here to here, this two leaves to the little baby leaves starting to pop up? Well, it's roughly a month or two to get to that point. It, it depends on the variety, it can, depends on your conditions and the time of year and all that. But uh, most of our begonias propagated from leaves are anywhere from uh, five to seven months from sticking the leaves to a finished plant, especially a larger plant than this. This would probably be four to five months. It's a good half a year or a third of a year that you're actually getting a proper plant. So, you know, just so everybody knows, you know, that's like, that's a tremendous amount of time. I think that you can appreciate then when you actually see a full plant in the market, whether you shop at your local garden center, if you shop at a big box, you could then appreciate the amount of growing that took place. And, and one of the things that I do recommend too is, is trying to propagate at home, because then I think people would appreciate more how long it actually takes from, you know, getting from point A to point B. Absolutely, and, and it, it gets them addicted to, to growing plants, because it is fun. Yeah. And then you have some to share. And it's perfect for a plant swap, which we did have, which mm -hmm. is really amazing. Mm -hmm. And now this is a cane begonia, correct? Correct. So cane and shrub type uh, begonias uh, that uh, you uh, take a cutting off the plant and you stick it in the soil. So these are not rooted in at all. And now this seems a little stemmier than, you know, this. Pretty much all the upright growing uh, cane and shrub like begonias, you can root a leaf but often all you'll ever have is a rooted leaf. Mm -hmm. It'll never, uh, it doesn't have the cells in it to differentiate into a shoot. So you'll have roots, but no shoots. But there are ex many exceptions to that as well. And now this one doesn't differ so much from here. How do you know when this is ready that it's been rooted already? We do what some people call a tug test. <laughs> <laughs> we pull on it and yeah. see if it feels like it's rooted in. Also on some plants, like the uh, gyneras behind me there, they're wilted and it's obvious once they root in that they perk up. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you're, when they don't have roots, they don't have any way to take up the water, mm -hmm. I suppose. They so. just have that little cut stem. They send out the roots. They have lots of surface area to, to grab onto water and pull it into the vascular system. So do these root any faster? Or is it kind of the same pace as these? In general, growing plants from cuttings like this, like the canes, uh, are easier, especially for a big, uh, beginner. Mm -hmm. It's faster and they're likely to have more success. There's more that can go wrong when a plant is taking months before it, it goes through the various stages there. And these are also cane and this is... Um, Correct. So you can see kind of a progression here of one getting a little bigger and, uh, and just uh, this is the same variety here, but burning bush. Mm -hmm. And that's a full one ready to, right. ready for ready sale. To sell. Yep. Right. Awesome. So we're going to clean off the table here and then we'll be right back with some more begonia propagation. Mm -hmm. 
So we have a good propagation set up here and it doesn't look like it's too complicated. So can you take us through a little bit of what you have here? To keep things simple, uh, we don't use any ho uh, rooting hormones. These plants don't require it. If you're growing a woody shrub-like plant, you may need rooting hormones. We don't find that we need them. Hmm. Let's start with uh, something easier, the, uh, uh, a cane or shrub like uh, begonia. And this so, is the Don Miller, right? So this is Don Miller, <laughs> named after Don Miller, who uh, works here. For the sake of the plant you're cutting, you want to cut above a node, and you want to cut where there's a shoot coming out and not a uh, blooming uh, stalk so that the plant will, that you're getting the cutting off will branch properly. Then I'm going to trim the excess here mm -hmm. off about that much. So some people like to remove this leaf down here, mm -hmm. this lower one that will be under the soil. Mm -hmm. We find a lot of times it's not necessary to do that. And you just put as many cuttings as you want to make a full uh, plant. Normally we would put more than one. And you could remove this shoot if you want. Just people have lots of different theories. We go with what works best for us. So you just stick it down in there, firm the soil a little bit to hold it upright, and that's it. And that's Put it. a tag in it, letting it so you can see how long it took to grow uh, with the date on it and the name of the plant. And, uh, and that's all there is to it. Moisten the soil. It will take a long time to dry out normally because there aren't any roots, so don't overwater it. And they like uh, high humidity. Some people will take like a dry cleaner's bag or something like that and, and make a little mini greenhouse out of it. And making sure that the plastic doesn't t touch the mm -hmm. leaves, yeah, right? That would be a, a good idea to keep that off. What's the importance of actually just making sure that things are a little bit clean before you take a cut? Because I know that's a pretty standard practice. We disinfect our tools between cuts yeah. uh, so we don't spread disease from one, uh, especially between one variety and another. There are a lot of different ways to do that. Some people use rubbing alcohol. I've seen people just spray their scissors with rubbing alcohol or wipe them down with rubbing alcohol. Some people use bleach, but bleach can be very corrosive. So if you use like a 10% bleach solution, then you have to oil the tool, which is an extra step that uh, just makes it more of a hassle. I've seen lots of different techniques. I saw Still someone do what they called uh, confetti cuttings, where they cut along a vein and had little cuttings like this big, and they put it on some sterile sand in a jar, sealed it up. I would have thought they would have rotted, and every single one of those produced a tiny, tiny little plant. Everyone has their own preference. The, the most common thing is to use leaf wedges, so I'll show that. And a lot of people use an X-Acto knife that they uh, sterilize and everything. So I'm going to be really sloppy and just use scissors, and that works too. You, again, go with what works. If I were propagating and I say, oh, this is a really beautiful plant and I have so many beautiful leaves, I might be tempted to say, oh, I want to propagate the one that looks the least prettiest, but you probably wouldn't want to do that, right? No, it's not as healthy, so I would rather pick a healthier one. Now, in this case, these leaves are so big that I would rather get rid of those leaves and it would make the plant more balanced. Hmm. That's just a personal preference. I choose your weapon, and uh, I'm going to cut this down here, this leaf. Hopefully the mics don't pick up the plant screaming as I... Uh, <laughs> in pain as I cut that. Now what cutting are we going to do with this one? I think what I'll do here is a cone cutting. So a lot of times people will use an X-Acto knife and put it down and, and cut it and I'm just going to use scissors so it's almost cutting itself here. <laughs> kind of partially breaking. So you have this is called the petiole. A lot of people just call it the stem. You can actually stick this as a cutting and, and root that hmm. and that will uh, usually produce a new plant. But you can take this and make a cone cutting. If you want to get rid of the excess leaf, you could cut it across here and discard that or make more cuttings out of it. But you just make a cone with it and put it like that. Put a little more soil in there. And that's all you have to do. And if it uh, doesn't rot after a, a couple months, uh, you'll start having little babies pop up, multiple ones around there. So that's a, a cone cutting. And did the babies come up out of the veins? Out where the veins okay. are. Let me show you the most common way that I've always seen Rex is done, and that is, uh, let's we'll start kind of like a cone cutting. Again, some people are going to be cringing that, oh, you're not using a, you know, a blade that you just sterilized and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what, I've seen this done plenty of times and it, it usually works. So you see the veins that you have there, mm -hmm. and so We'll just um, cut this into wedges, hmm. and we can get more than one off of this. Get another one here. 
these are some wedges so you can just stick those in you can just put one in a pot you could uh, put multiples you have one fuller uh, trim off this excess material here. What's the benefit of trimming off the excess material? Um, it's not needed. It's just extra something extra to rot. And then I can just go on and do the same thing with the rest of this. It, I could either cut it right there or I could have two veins in a, a cutting. But I think you get the idea that uh, you just uh, take that and, and stick it in there. And it also, by using multiple leaves if you do lose some of them then you know maybe only half will take maybe all of them will maybe none and so you start another one and see if you have more success and are you just using a standard potting soil or a potting mix or it's no? a standard peat moss based potting mix uh, the ph is adjusted a little bit and has a little perlite in it for drainage well this is like super easy i mean hopefully you guys you know feel ready and prepared to do your propagation at least with your begonias at your house and according to steve it's going to be like pretty addictive to do that mm -hmm. trying to get people <laughs> addicted here because uh, it's fun it's to, and it's fun to be able to share them you know with new employees here one of my favorite things is to see someone new and they go and they they look at the tag and realize it was a group they propagated there's a little bit of a disconnect when you're just sticking the cuttings but what what the finished product's going to look like so there's a lot of pride in that and in, in having the the finished product it's like hey i did that uh now i feel a little bit more comfortable in taking some of the pro uh, you know these and propagating myself considering that there's so many different ways and we haven't even seen all the different ways that you could do it so um, yeah, if you guys have other ways that you propagate your begonia leaves, like please share in the comments below. But otherwise, thank you so much. You're welcome. Steve's Leaves has been growing unique varieties of houseplants for over 41 years. You can check out all of his fancy foliage at stevesleaves.com. And don't forget to check out his buy four plants, get one free deal with promo code SUMMER. Good from November 6th through November 13th, 2017. Details are in the description below and on my Instagram and Facebook at Homestead Brooklyn. Hopefully you loved all of those tips on begonia propagation and you'll be making many different begonias in your own home. If you like these episodes, of course, you could subscribe to the channel. That would help a tremendous amount. And you could also follow me on my journey on Instagram at Homestead Brooklyn and on homesteadbrooklyn.com. See you next week. Thank you.